DIY or Die, Walker Vapor Group LLC, or any of its associates do not condone nor encourage the use of nicotine, vapor products, or any mood-altering substances without the explicit consent of a physician. The content viewable on this channel is strictly for entertainment purposes only and not meant to be seen as informational or educational. Must be 21 years or older to view these materials. Welcome back to another episode of Noted, your personal walking, talking flavor review. My name is Emily, also known as Mill Nikon, and please say hello to my other co-hosts. We've got Chiba Steva and ID10T. How are you boys doing tonight? Oh, doing pretty great. Just swimming in a lovely field of anus right now. I'm <laughs> digging it, man. <laughs> one. Yep. <laughs> How you doing, Dave? We're going to keep track of all of the times that you mispronounce an East on purpose. <laughs> I don't even think you can pronounce it correctly at this point. Yeah. And anus Anis seed. Yeah, but he can't do it. He, can't, he, he can't cannot do it. Do it. That's like, hilarious. Like, like blueberries, only this one is more funny. <laughs> <laughs> we have an extra large panel tonight. Oh, yeah. A lot of You're good. only saying that because I'm fat. <laughs> extra we, extra large 3x we, we need 3x a, tall my dude 3x tall there we go <laughs> <laughs> okay there's rick fresh off the release of giant swan oh uh, yeah get swanned everybody shout out to liquid barn okay there's my plug thank you for that and then copal he i caught him talking about licorice <laughs> like just a while just talking about how much he loves licorice yeah. So, yeah. Talk about licorice some more. Come on with us Monday night. Talk about licorice some more. My body's ready. So here he is. You have to do that. My my Anise is ready. <laughs> <laughs> so so we're gonna stretch the definition. That was actually punny. What Anise could be. <laughs> <laughs> so um, we are talking about licorice, Anise, and absinthe. And why are we talking about all three of those on the same week? Um. Is it, do you want to answer that, or do I have to? Uh, uh, because two thirds of the normal hosts can't stand it. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we've got so many people doing it. But yeah, <laughs> um, it's weird. But uh, anise, you know, because it's a seed, right, from one plant that's ground up and used as a spice usually. Yeah. And then there's licorice, which is an extract from a root of a completely different plant. Uh -huh. Flavor-wise, it can be hard to tell them apart. Mm, yeah. And anise is one of the reasons why absinthe tastes the way it does. So that's why we've got this thrown in here. Or maybe yeah. it's licorice. Is it, is it anise or licorice in absinthe? Uh, it's, green oh. anise. it's green anise seed. It's a green anise seed. Oh, okay. And I think anise seed and, and anise are the same thing, right? They come in the same. So, yeah. Plant. Yeah. Yeah. There's like a little pod with some anise seeds in there. Yeah, anise is like the whole pod, and anise, anise seed is just the seed. I don't know if there's a flavor difference there. Imagine the pod tastes a little woody. Yeah. <laughs> this tastes no, it extra pod-ish. <laughs> pod-like. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, I hate licorice. <laughs> I love licorice. I went ahead and tortured myself and went through 18 licorice flavors for you people. This Holy week. moly. 18. I that's, that's more than I even. I think that's more than I even own. <laughs> I, just, I didn't. I didn't, uh, I didn't ask and for and or look at a list uh, before we did this, so I don't know what we're doing. My uh, my respect for you, Dave, has just gone up a little bit. I, yeah. Uh, how I, many how many anus you have? I think it's just I only a, had two. a masochist thing. <laughs> and really. I bought them just for the show. Like I. Oh, there you go. I didn't have them, and so I I bought two. And because I ordered from Bull City, and that's the only ones that they had, and I wasn't gonna go scour the earth for more <laughs> flavors. Yeah, I think I that's fair. I saved a lot of money. I, I didn't have to make an appointment with my dominatrix this week. I could just yeah. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> I was I was gonna say what's 
how does that pencil out cost wise? Is it cheaper just to get somebody to uh, dom you for a while, or do you just buy flavors? Flavors usually <laughs> works. <laughs> I had. Uh, well, they have a discount on anus. The real reason Dave started mixing. <laughs> <laughs> It's the real reason I continue to do this stupid show anyway. I don't know about <laughs> mixing. Um, I got four from Capella, four from Flavor West, three from Bape Train, two from Flavor Art, and five from miscellaneous brands. You said four from Capella? Four. Holy macaroni. Because the, the Euro flavors, right? Because they got the Euro f- flavor line out now. Where do you even get those? Um, I got... Euro? This- uh, from yeah, straight from here. No, I got them from um, out of here. Vapor Supply, DIY Vapor Supply. Oh, okay, they have them. They seem to carry a lot of that stuff. Yeah, I think they're on Bull City, and I got mine from ECX, so I think they're pretty well out there now. Oh, okay, yeah, I didn't see uh, any Capella Black Licorice or anything on on Bull City, but maybe I missed them. Did you search for Black Licorice instead of just Licorice? Uh, I just searched licorice. Oh, yeah. No, Capella totally just has a licorice flavor, but getting lost in the weeds. Yeah. Getting lost in the weeds. Besides being hard to tell apart, someone, uh, it was Alfred. Alfred Pudding sent me some trivia for uh, the week to share. He said that um, that licorice is dangerous in large quantities. It can actually hurt you somehow. Oh, really? So, like toxic or poisonous or something? Yeah, so even though yeah. in Europe most of the licorice is made out of actual licorice, in the United States it's just flavored with anise and artificial flavorings um, to taste yeah. like licorice. So, I don't know. I think we're missing out. I want some of that dangerous licorice. Well, nothing that tastes that strongly could like not be some sort of poison. Like That's the thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's trying to warn you by tasting like licorice. <laughs> yeah, like the natural evolution of things, you know, if it's Yeah. Now, like, oh, that's gross. It's mostly- Rick, I could have sworn that you liked licorice or I wouldn't have asked you to come on here. Oh no, I I do. I just also like making fun of licorice too. I'm conflicted in that way. I'm deep, man. Okay, cool. That works. I heard that licorice is an acquired taste. Did you guys have to acquire it or were you like, mm, licorice yum, right from the start? Um, I mean, I'm sure when I was a kid, I didn't really like it that much. But actually, when I think about it now, I think I've always liked black licorice, like the black jelly beans. I always liked those ones. Yeah, black jelly beans were hands down my favorite until yeah. I discovered like black licorice. I, it's like I didn't even like, probably until I was like nine or ten even realized that like black licorice and black jelly beans were the same thing because I never had black licorice. I just had. But I love black jelly beans a lot. Can yeah, you know, weirder. I, uh, I I grew up eating everybody else's black jelly beans. I think I had a taste <laughs> for licorice at a pretty pretty early age. Because you wanted them, or because they gave them to you? Like, here's your share. Uh, it was mostly just ones. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> convenience, and then I just got into it. I don't know. I just I've never minded that licorice taste. It's not like to this day. Like, don't get me wrong. I'm a fat kid. Like, I'll go for whatever. But it's not my <laughs> it's not your first thing. Yeah, but every once in a while, I like some black licorice. Licorice, all sorts are kind of delicious, even though they don't have a ton of licorice in them. Um, a yeah. good black jelly bean. Hell, even like the black vines or whatever, like the, they're perfectly fine too. Licorice is okay. Yeah, I've yeah. always liked okay. licorice. Like yeah, even red licorice. But just like just like uh, in food, like in vaping, like I can only handle like so much of it. And then like, yeah, I just feel like my whole palate is blown out, you know? so much of it is any yeah like <laughs> salted <laughs> licorice salted licorice like the, the the really intense salted licorice i can seriously have about three pieces of that and then i just <laughs> never want to see it again <laughs> yeah i yeah it's i love salted licorice but like i just like you like i can only have like a little bit at a time because like it's just it's just too much man well, coming from somebody who doesn't like licorice, probably the most interesting licorice flavor I tried was Molenberry Shock. 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 Have you heard of that one? Uh, I've heard of Shock by Fear Factory. No. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Fear um, Factory. What, the, <clears throat> what decade is this again? Shock by <laughs> Molenberry. Their description is the best of strawberry juice, fresh citrus lime, Seasonal forest berries and a perfect blend of anise and licorice. Secret ingredient closes marathon of flavors. 
Wow, period. quite the description there. Mm, yeah. I feel like some things got lost in translation there. There's some missing <laughs> missing words. <laughs> that last one's not really a complete sentence, but um, uh, this the secret ingredient, it, I'll just go ahead and give it away. It's a really light touch of menthol. Oh, okay. Just a little little cooling. Yeah. Oh, but so it's, it's like too. It's not even just like Polar Blaster and WS23. It's definitely menthol, but it's like just enough menthol for you to tell that it's menthol and not WS23. I uh, gotcha. Like just barely enough. Um it might even, it could possibly be WS23, and just the way that it's interacting with the other flavors is making me think, no, nah, there's there's some menthol in there. Hmm. It's not a strong menthol. Like I said, a very light touch. Um, yeah, I think I, menthol pairs, like menthol and mint pairs pretty well with black licorice. I see that a lot. That's what I was going to ask you guys about because some of y'all have tried these one shots that they have at Chefs that do that, I think. Um, yeah, I think the Chefs ones use WS23. Um, mm -hmm. They're green with MV and... Oh my God, that stuff's so good. Yeah, dude, green with envy is absolutely delicious, and so is pink with envy. But I think they use WS twenty three and not like menthol. Like I feel like the menthol, if you're not a menthol person, the menthol and the blends, especially like some of the Capella blends, like the menthol kind of throws you. Yeah, it's, I I'm like one hundred percent sure that it's it's WS twenty three in all their with envy line. Yeah, that so it's with envy. Is is envy their like code word for licorice or anise or WS twenty three? Uh, well, I think it's just their code for anise and really fucking cold, right? Because I'm, okay. okay. I'm pretty sure it's like over two percent WS twenty three. Probably close that's pretty high between three and five. It's really cold. It's it's cold. It's really cold. But I mean, like, it seems really bad. Like the first time you vape it, are really strong, but then like after like a week. Yeah, you can build tolerance to that stuff really quick. Yeah, pretty. Normal. Um, from the Mullenberry shock, I get mostly a strawberry forward mixed berry lemonade. I don't know why they say lime in the description. It tastes like lemonade to me. Yeah, no, you're not getting any lime from it. No lime, and then it's got anise just like all up in it. Oh yeah, um, so it's pretty powerful with the anise. It's not so much that it's powerful. It seems to be fairly well balanced, but it's throughout. It's not just like here's this, you know, coolant and menthol and here's your your anise and then here's some fruit flavor it's very spread out um or it lingers which however you want to put it it's always there it doesn't just disappear after a second um okay. now to me it tastes like they, they messed up a very good berry lemonade by putting that in there <laughs> <laughs> but but if you're into that sort of thing you might love it yeah and you said that's mullenberry mullenberry shock it's from shock. their M line series, which is supposed to be one shots. I mix it up at six percent. It's a full flavored vape. Uh, there's no, okay. any, there's not any throat hit. Um, it's really smooth and crisp with the lemon, and then the berry sort oh. of finishes it out sweet, but it's still pretty clean. Mm, it's not super sticky. Good. Yeah, it it would be really good if they didn't put that <laughs> in there. Probably, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, sort of on the same tip if we're talking about berry lemonades that happen to have some anise in there. Um, so out of that Euro flavor series, I did try Capella's Pink Punch. Pink uh, Punch. Okay. Yeah, like all of these are named like super nebulously, but the Pink Punch is supposed to be lemon and berries with anise and menthol. So, so basically same. the same thing as Shock. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> basically the same thing. I had a much less positive experience with it than you seem to have, <laughs> have had with the Mullenberry. I feel like with these Capella Euro blends, um, that menthol is super jarring and it doesn't necessarily go with everything underneath. So it's a very like sweet kind of candy raspberry flavor with some lemony touches. I, I know it's supposed to be like some sort of pink lemonade kind of flavor, but it yeah. kind of more just tastes like somebody melted down a bunch of Swedish fish. Um, okay. And then you drank that with a cough drop in your mouth because like the combination of the anise that they're using, which is fairly prominent, and then the specific cooling from the menthol just makes me like think of cough drops. Mm, um, okay. the, the balance is a little bit wonky to me. It's not a bad flavor. And if you don't mind anise and menthol, like if that kind of thing is your jam, if you want those two things together, uh, it's, you could do worse in one bottle. But yeah, it's, it's not necessarily my cup of tea. You mentioned cough drops, and I think when I was a child, I must have been had to take medicine that tasted like black licorice, and then mm. just 
blacked it out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because whenever I I try something that's like a black licorice flavor, it's just like just so like this is medicine. <laughs> I'm like it tastes it's very just, medicinal. I can't like it. Yeah. Yeah, I could see that. I bet there probably is some you know anus or uh, black licorice type medicines out there, especially mm-hmm. like from the uh, <laughs> from the um, you know, olden days, right? That was a pretty common type of flavor. Do you ever have a fisherman's friend cough shops? Yes. I have not. Yeah, they, they have a pretty like a nice forward cold. Uh, is that is that a niece or a whorehound? I think it's you know, I think it's actually a whorehound, but yeah. I mean uh, whorehound kind of has that a niece vibe to it. Yeah, yeah. six on one half does the other with that stuff. Yeah. yeah. Um I tried um, get suckered anise, and I think I'm done with get suckered flavors now. <laughs> Yeah. Well, last week I tried one that tastes like it had motor oil in it, and this one uh it has a grease, not like car grease, but like cooking grease. And I just don't know what's up with that. It tastes like uh, grease with anise with licorice. Is it supposed to be a licorice or anise flavor? It's supposed to be anise. It just says anise on the bottle. It tastes like holiday spice ice cream with uh, with a hint of an anise and a touch of grease. Okay, huh? That huh. seems pretty odd, especially if it's supposed to be just an. an it's an, just an, supposed to be anise, but the dry spice on top tastes like it's mixed with nutmeg and cinnamon, and like a touches yeah. of anise and clove. Yeah, and then it's yeah. got its sweet Weird. vanilla cream, and then the finish is just like oddly greasy. You know what flavors I'm talking about? The flavors that are oddly greasy. Yeah, some yeah. of them are supposed to be, and it actually works like fried food flavors right. yeah but not this why yeah that seems and, extremely out of place for an, an anus yeah and the anise tastes out it tastes out of place like it doesn't belong in this holiday spice cream so we're talking so, about greasy anus here yes <laughs> yes that's jeez. <laughs> So we've come to. I, I couldn't um, miss the opportunity i couldn't <laughs> so you know, I, I couldn't it's just leave. terrible don't yeah was was anybody else confused did anybody else pick up in aware Anise? I did I not. Okay. Like, I was super confused by that one because, like, you hear the word anise and you hear the word unaware and you assume it's going to be just, like, this complete bomb. Um, mm-hmm. And it was actually probably one of the more subtle anise flavors that I tried. It's interesting. It's a little savory and a little earthy. Um, it could definitely pass as, like, a star anise kind of flavor. Like, it has... Almost, yeah, like a savoriness to it that I didn't necessarily get from any of the other flavors. Yeah, sounds not, like it knows that it needs as a spice and not whatever else these other flavors think it is. Yeah, yeah, they they tend to run candied from trying some of these other anise flavors. They tend to run candied, and the Inawera, um it definitely wasn't candied. It also has. Like, I think I could see people using it, like, with that traditional anise counterpoint thing up against bright fruits, because it felt like a very, like, low-down kind of basey flavor that would work really well with something brighter up top. But for, uh, for in a wear and anise, it was actually pretty mellow, which is yeah. interesting. It's kind of, it's kind of, like a, to be kind of violent. That's, it's kind of, it's kind of warmer and, like, a so- softer top, like, softer note than, like, most of the other traditional anises. Yeah. That's um, so it's not like where FA anise is like insanely bright and you like cannot possibly bury it. Like, <laughs> I think you could actually like really layer it pretty effectively. Um, yeah, that's good. Yeah. When you're talking about the, oh, sorry. Oh, uh, please carry on. Um, I was going to say, when you're talking about those like Euro style mixers or whatever, like the 8 million Heisenberg type clones out there, I could definitely see this one working really well with those Heisenberg style vapes. Oh, that's going to sell some Inaware anise. <laughs> okay, the um, you were talking about how some of them tend to go candy. I was thinking immediately of, of Capella's anise. Mm. It mostly tastes like anise, but it's awfully sweet for a spice. Like not quite as candy as candy, but maybe like anise syrup. Okay. Now, a- a- anise uh, can be pretty sweet. Um, yeah, but not uh, syrupy. Not syrupy, though. Yeah. It's, it's got it's got kind of that same like syrupy vibe as hibiscus, right? Like, yes, it does. But with oh, okay. <laughs> with that spice is not as much fun as. But, but I get an edge of plastic. Is. I get like an edge of plastic from Capella's anise. 
if you don't I get a off, weird yeah. hint of metallic citrus. I mean, maybe that's oh, what really? I'm misinterpreting as plastic, but I guess plastic to me. Okay. And it's not the only one either that tastes like it has citrus in it. I don't know what's up with that. Really? I don't know if I'm tasting them wrong or what's going on here. Um, because Flavor West anise also tastes like a ton of anise, but in a limeade. Huh. And that, it's, that's it's interesting. Not, it's not just a little off note. There's like a, this clear backdrop. In the in the Capanese, it's more just a little bit of like, what's that? It's like a citrus, but it also tastes like metal. I'm not sure. <laughs> um, in the Flavor West, it's it's pretty clearly like sweetened lime underneath the anise. I don't know. Wow. I mean, it it's a no fine sense. pairing. <laughs> but um, yeah, don't... it's a, it's a, I guess if that's your thing, it's a fine pairing. Uh, but why? And what if you didn't want that? What if you wanted it to spice up some kind of bakery or something? And you're like, what the hell? Why is there a lime in here? Yeah, that would seem pretty out of place. <clears throat> Especially with something like a uh, anise, right? Like, such a distinct flavor, you shouldn't really add anything else to. And then the vape train anise also tastes like it has a little hint of citrus in there. Hmm. It's I'd say it's it's less than Capella or Flavor West, but it's still in there. Are they trying to like dull down that sharpness? Well, no. this is this is Alfred again. He I think he really wants to be on the show because he tells me <laughs> things to tell y'all now every week but yeah. he said that that um actual anise the the actual pods of anise have a lot of limonene in them oh, okay yeah that's true and that that's if correct. they're trying to copy anise they might be like putting limonene into the flavor to try to make it taste more like the actual thing but it's not Maybe working just right high. yeah because if, i mean the flavor west is like limeade I don't know what's going on. And then the, even the vape train, the vape train has some woody accents and the citrus is real slight. It's spicier. Like, uh, like Rick was talking about the Inawera being spicier. Um, it's not as mellow though. It's pretty in your face from the vape train, uh, more concentrated than Capella and flavor West, like 2% of it was more flavorful than 3% Capella or 4% flavor West. Oh, um, wow. Also not as sweet. So probably more authentic, but that hint of citrus is still there. I don't know what the, I'm not sure what that's about. How's the, uh, like, I would say body, but none of these are really going to have much body, but I know like flavor arts is pretty thin. Well, flavor Capella is pretty thick and syrupy. Like, like, um, like Copal said, the, it's like hibiscus. Yeah. So that goes for the whole, like all of them. The flavor West is like, beverage thick or juice in between beverage and juice thick the yeah, main train is a lot thinner okay which i think would be a good thing in the spice ingredient usually yeah i probably wouldn't want it to be too thick you know um flavor art anise that's i have very short notes on this i just don't have much to say about it <laughs> couple said it was bright and that's what i wrote brighter spicier anise it, than it others works. It reminds me a lot of an absinthe flavor, like a past or like a pastille. Like it has a definite candy vibe. Like I didn't try a ton of anises for the for the show or whatever, but comparing that with like the Inawera anise, like it's like night and day. It's like you're talking more of an almost licorice y, like good and plenty. Doesn't it have like out. a creamy, almost creamy base, like a really light cream? Um, yeah, it's got well, it's Flavor got a art. Yes, it's got a smoothness. Yeah. Like towards it. yeah it's guys I, I can't really i can't really say cream is the right word but it's it's smoother is mm -hmm. fa anise and there's FA something to it black touch the same no no, no not, not at even all. close <laughs> <laughs> um but that fa anise was kind of a pleasant surprise for me just because i was ex expecting it to be like another anise flavor but instead it's just kind of like a weirder sweeter absence flavor so mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I like it. Um, and I, I'm I'm pretty sure that, that that's the anise note that they're using to stack on top of all their with energy flavors at Chefs. You think it's oh, flavor art? I'm I'm almost, I see almost positive of it being uh, flavor art anise. Yeah, there's got to be an extra anise in there because uh, tasting the decadent vapors absent by itself, you can tell there's a little bit extra anise in there. Yeah, for sure. 
Uh, BT Cruise in the chat saying FA goes floral in no time. I didn't run into that, but then again, I also didn't test it for more than about 10 minutes. I've, got, I've never I've never pushed it over half a percent personally. I never had a problem with it being floral mm -hmm. in that range. But uh, I mean, you, you'd have to really like Anise to need more than half a percent. Like half a percent stands out really well in almost yeah, um, up I to 1%. I went 2% solo and it didn't, floral isn't the word I would use to describe it, but it was an unusually bright, but not this is, this is oh, what I get FA for black. reading the chat. He just said, sorry, Emily got me corrected. F.A. Black Dutch goes floral in no time. Oh, I see. Okay. <laughs> okay. Never interact with the chat. Gotcha, gotcha. I haven't messed around with Black Dutch as much, but I have raped it a few times. I have it. So yeah. one of the things I've found that is that when you when I was torturing myself with this stuff is that vaping things that say anise or licorice on the bottle is a lot less offensive and like anger inducing to me than finding surprise anise or licorice in places where <laughs> yeah. it shouldn't be. Yeah, no, that's a that's a good like point. definitely when you're expecting like in a where raw pineapple. <laughs> oh um, god what a horrible thing <laughs> i i said copple my bottle of in raw pineapple because i thought he'd get a kick out of how horrifying that is to find that <laughs> yeah yeah um wow. i guess maybe nana's cake is supposed to have anise but when i yeah. see cake i don't think anise usually or like wonder flavors um milk. so that's I pretty wonder nasty. Flavors I, you cut out <laughs> Has a She's a cannoli shell. Yeah, and oh, okay. maybe cannolis, oh, okay. like real cannolis, have anise in it, and I just didn't know. But like when I get anise in something that I'm not expecting it, it just turns some cannolis out. have anise, but not. No, no. Um, that's not like a that's not like a blanket ingredient in all cannolis. Yeah, I, I believe I've had one with a little bit of anus in it before. Yeah. <clears throat> What's well, it's not a blanket ingredient in cakes either, but it's in that flavor art not as cake. It's like stuff. a blanket ingredient in Italian bakeries, though. Yeah. Um, it's in various right. tobaccos. It shows up. Yeah. Soho, as Graham and uh, Shindo said already. I just I taste a whole bunch of anise in Soho. I don't get that much out of it. I I I'm, I I get like a tiniest back note, but I don't get that. Much. I just get a lot of caramel, really vanilla and caramel with a, like mm -hmm. that stage of tobacco. Yeah. Quite a few of those Itawira tobaccos, I thought, tasted like licorice. Um. Yeah, I can see that. I wanted to include vape train. I included the vape train fig in my 18, um, 18 licorice flavors, licorice and anise flavors, because I don't just get a little anise off note in there. I get like 60% spicy anise From, and 40% oh yeah. fig. Like pretty spicy up there with the anise? I think it is. Yeah. It's, I mean, what's that? I said number five. <laughs> It's thick, it's dark, sweet, musky, figgy fruit, but it's like underneath this blanket of spicy anise. I have no idea why a fig flavor would be absolutely loaded with that, but I just wanted to put that observation out there because if you're into anise, you might want to give that one a try. So I, I was a severe doubter of vape train fig. I was working, actually I was going to work, but then I shit the bed like I usually do. Um, <laughs> putting, made a fig newton recipe using vape train fig. And if you let it calm down for quite a while, it does get a pretty good fig to it. But yeah, right off the shake, it's, it's fucking, it's just a muse. It's got a, it's got a pretty good fig after a couple, just, I only let it see for like five days. It's yeah. got a pretty good fig in there already, but still with the anise all over it. I mean, what is the purpose of this? So I've never mixed fig with any of my uh, anise flavors before. Uh, how does that pair? Is it like a good pairing at least? Or I think it just is just a way to ruin a good fig, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> to someone that doesn't hate a anise, uh, what do you fig think? Fig and anise is a fine pairing if yeah. it's balanced well. Yeah, right. You got to have that balance for it. But I can yeah. see those going pretty well together. Yeah, it's pretty decent. But yeah, if you're if you're getting a fig flavor, you probably don't want the anus. Rick, in. when you were doing the Euro series, did you try sweet blend? Um, yeah, I the other ones I tried were sweet blend and uh, the cool anus bliss. Uh, <laughs> yeah I, okay i tried both of those let's see if we there's there's the same thing there's my those. one that's the only one i'm gonna do <laughs> okay, that's one for you <laughs> um beat some good old anus bliss i you know honestly the 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 cool and 
the cool anise bliss and the sweet blend tasted fairly similar to me. Well, listen just... to the descriptions. Capella calls one of them a delightfully fruity blend with notes of cherries, berries, pineapple, and a smooth anise eucalyptus finish. They calls the other one a perfect blend of berries and tropical fruits with a menthol and anise twist. It sounds yeah. like two different people wrote descriptions for the same flavor. <laughs> <laughs> well, and... It, it, it tastes like two different versions of the same flavor. It's just one of them is distinctly better, better than the other. Um, I liked the sweet blend quite a bit more. I feel like they both have like a fairly medicinal cherry and they have a fairly aggressive um, anise flavor to them. And then they have like a really, really hard menthol. It's just with the sweet blend, it feels like it has a little bit more body to it. It's a little sweeter, a little fuller. Uh, the the cool anise bliss just tasted completely medicinal to me. Oh, really? The cool. I got um, one of them is a lot more berry forward, uh, cherry and berry like tart tart berry maybe maybe cherry mm -hmm. I don't know. And the other one is a lot more tropical fruit. Well, it's Capella, uh, right? Other than that, they're pretty tart similar. Um, so which which one was easier for you to vape? Because I was definitely in the camp sweet blend. Oh, I'm definitely firmly in the camp sweet blend, even though I, I didn't get the description so well. It it kind of tastes like whorehound cough drops mm. um, or, you know, with that combination of anise and menthol. And yeah. then just like tart berries and, I don't know, simple syrup with a touch of pineapple. Yeah. I don't get the eucalyptus finish they're talking about. Uh, yeah, or maybe I'm taking the out. word finish too literally, but all I get is menthol up front and pretty punch pretty good punch of menthol it's not in the finish at all it's just here's some menthol and then here's the rest of the flavor that was capella yeah, yeah capella sweet blend but it was a lot easier to vape it does a that kind of warm and cool thing at first with the menthol and the spice yeah. and then it has a very sweet finish hmm. i'm pretty sure you could clone this if you mixed uh capella anise menthol and beetlejuice <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure you could clone it if you put one of the Luden's cherry cough drops and one of the fisherman's friends at, in your mouth at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> you get a lot. That's you get. You get. You're really sensitive to that nightmare cherry, aren't you? Yeah. Well, and then so I call the two cough drops the cool anise bliss, and I'd call the two cough drops with maybe a couple starbursts in your mouth at the same time. The th uh, for the sweet blend. The sweet blend. Okay. Yeah. The cool Anis Bliss gives me more of that tropical funkiness. Okay. Like like a lot of pineapple and maybe a touch of mango. And it's okay. just it's not it's not good with the anise and the and the menthol. It's it's not as good as the sweet blend combination yeah, I is. See, I mean, I could see that. Clash. It just tastes like they use don't the really... same flavors but turn the dials differently from one to the other, you know? Yeah, and you don't really want like funkiness with your anus. You know what I mean? Yeah, you, you definitely don't want that. <laughs> you don't want it to be funky. The body on the sweet blend is more syrupy, and the cool anise bliss is more... I'm almost said it. I almost said it. Because <laughs> it it's more fleshy than syrupy, which is kind of gross in the, in the in that context. Yeah. Interesting. You, you, you dug a lot further into these than I did because, yeah, I took a couple of vapes of that, that cool anise bliss and was like, nah, I'm nope. good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I try to dig into them just in case there's somebody who really wants to know what these damn things taste like. Right. <laughs> Did you yeah. not try the Capella Licorice, which is also part of the Euro series? No, I tried the Capella Licorice and I was really pleasantly surprised, actually. Yeah, yeah same here. I could. I, this is one, one out of all these flavors. This is one I can actually see myself using. Nice, man. I knew you liked some anus. <laughs> it, it tastes like black licorice, but not at all like a Twizzler or a jelly bean. Okay. It has, it's something different. It's, well, have you ever had, have, uh, Dave, have you ever had like actual like high quality black licorice? No, I haven't, but I imagine yeah. this is what it tastes like. It's sweet like candy, especially in that sort of like thick syrupy base, but there's a whole lot of stuff going on there. It's like warm and spicy. Does it have um, any, like molassesy type of notes? Not, not so. I didn't get anything molassesy in it, but it's like hints of vanilla and something herbal that kind of reminds me of fennel. Um, yeah, yeah. It was like a nice. In it. It's complex. 
It was it was like out of the black licorice flavors that I ended up trying. I think it was probably one of like the cleanest tasting licorice flavors. Like it was bright. It yeah, like Dave was saying, it kind of trended a little bit more towards fennel. Uh, it didn't have a ton of body, but it had enough body to kind of party. Um, nice, clean, bright flavor. I yeah, was really pleasantly surprised by it. So when I said I could actually see myself using it, I was thinking maybe I could maybe to spice up something like a root beer or a ginger beer vape. I kind of want to see what like, cause I tried it at 3% and I'm thinking I would love to see what like half or 1% of this does to something like Mr. Burgundy's Fitz's recipe or yeah. even Copel's ginger beer. Yeah. I, I think anything, especially like root beer and those type of like bright, uh, crisp spices, like I think it, and it's prepared pretty well with that. I yeah, guess. I mean, it's kind of a shoe in as long as it's not like a really, uh, like really aggressive uh, anise note. It's, um, yeah, it definitely fits well into root beers, ginger beers, or stuff like that. Um, and I think, I think I agree that the Capella's licorice would definitely fit in there. It's I, not, I've never had salted licorice. I don't know what that tastes like or how the effect is, but this flavor even leaves a tingle. And it yeah. kind of reminds me like I've eaten something salty. It doesn't taste the, salty per se. The next but. time you're out at the store, check out, there's this brand of licorices that they make and they, they come in all kinds of different flavors. They're from Australia and they they come in these tiny little nubs, not like big. Yeah, I've seen that, but I've only seen that in like red licorice. I haven't seen the black one anywhere. The black oh. licorice, like the, the anise is really mild in high end black licorice. Mm hmm. I mean, it's there, but it's not, it's not nearly as strong as you get like from like black Twizzlers or black jelly beans where it's like in your face. Yeah. Those black like jelly beans are pretty potent with the anus. Yeah. Like uh real high end black licorice doesn't have as nearly as strong as a anise and it's a more like a blended herbal thing. But it's really good. Yeah. I well, think if I, go ahead. I was going to say, I think if I was going to pick one of these licorices, not that we've talked about all of them yet, but if I was going to pick one of them to drag up higher and use this as a solo flavor, uh, somewhere like north of 5%, it would probably be the Capella licorice. I think it's Absolutely. really solidly built without having too many glaring problems with it. It's it's like the least aggressive and the easiest to manage, I think. Yeah. Well, that's Cap licorice, but what, what do you guys think about Flavor West black licorice? Because that's the one that I thought is a lot less complex mm -hmm. and tastes almost exactly like a Brock's black jelly bean. It's so, like, sweet and mm -hmm. like powerful <laughs> yeah and like it has that candy thing in your on your palate like that yeah. like coating, you know like it's kind of gritty too like when you're eating the jelly bean and it starts like uh you know crumbling in your mouth it's got a little bit of that going on too i think it i think it captures at least a black cherry jelly bean pretty well um, i didn't get that um i didn't get that grittiness and i definitely didn't get the like the chewy inside of a jelly bean i thought maybe it was like it's like the hard taking, crack outer shell to me like mm. taking a shot of a melted black jelly bean because there wasn't really much there to <laughs> chew on i yeah it leaves some uh leaves you wanting some in the, the place of texture but uh as far as the flavor goes it does it does a pretty good job it just tastes like a black jelly bean right mm-hmm yeah, nope. I found it like full body, like it was thick, but it didn't have like that jelly texture. Yeah. yeah. It's also just for me at least, I also found like that it was like distinctly warmer. Mm. Um warmer, a little bit sweeter, and like with some black licorice, you get a little bit of molasses sweetening or something. And like I started to get some of that like really dark, almost funky sweetness out of it. It's a little boozy. Um yeah. I, I definitely like it quite a bit, but I don't think it's as clean of a licorice flavor as Cabela by a long shot. Okay. Okay, but no, if you want to talk about if you want to talk about molasses y licorice flavors, <laughs> flavor art black touch. That is the molasses in your black <laughs> it yeah, tastes definitely. like molasses like seasoned with licorice. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's like a nice sort of more herbal non it's intensely sweet, but it doesn't taste like a candy licorice. It's like licorice root and molasses. It's very warm, very dark, uh, much more syrupy than I remember. Still maybe a little bit musty and funky, but it's a really interesting flavor. Is oh, this yeah. more in line with authentic European licorice? Is that what European licorice tastes like? Molasses-y so, yeah. like that? Yeah, it's closer. Do um, they make it out of molasses? I think it might be a core ingredient. 
uh, from like the early days, but not maybe not. I don't think in traditional manufacturing old, anymore. Like old timey. Yeah, old timey stuff. Uh, old timey European licorice, black touch. <laughs> yeah, they yeah. they they sweeten some licorice. I mean, some of it's just sugar. Some of it's molasses for some of the darker stuff, and then they occasionally use like honey and stuff too. But yeah, the the black touch has like this really deep sort of rich sweetness, and it's like definitely an herbal licorice as opposed to a candy licorice. It's odd. It yeah, has a yeah. little bitter edge to it, like herbs. Yeah, yeah. I think it's overall a, a pretty good flavor, and it, it, but if it fits into less places, I think than plate than like Capellas or Flavor Wests. Um, yeah, I mean, I uh, well, I just because it, a lot of different things, but yeah, I think it's probably going to be a little bit more difficult to use just because that uh, that herbal sort of licorice root note. Would you but, use it in like a tea? Because people oh, drink yeah. licorice tea. Yeah, yes. you could do it. it in a like tea. it would you work it, if you kept it low, like point two five to half a percent. Like, it could definitely fit into a tea. It seems yeah. like it would work better for a tea than, say, Flavor West or Capilla. Um, and if it's your thing, it definitely fits. I think it fits better into tobaccos because it, oh, it doesn't yeah. give you like the licorice uh, vibe, but it also helps with dry problems, right? Because mm -hmm, it's uh, pretty smooth and it's like it's really and especially cool. when you're working with tobaccos, like if you're working with like a flavor art tobaccos, which tend to be on the dry and hay side mm -hmm. uh, of the of the spectrum, um, it, it like, goes along with. It used to be like a, a thing back in the like day. cover up the bell pepper in the flavor art tobaccos. <laughs> uh, you know, I don't. <laughs> I've never, I've never got that bell pepper vibe that I've heard you talk about. But there's definitely like the green grass slash hay thing they've got going on in some of them. So maybe that's just a, I don't know, different perception of the same problem. Um, same green thing. Something yeah. green anyway. Uh, but, but yeah, it definitely does help cover up some of that stuff if you want to. And you can use, you can even keep it low enough that you don't even really taste it and it still helps that back end. Yeah. Cool. Like you started like a quarter percent in a tobacco and then build it up from there. I thought about that Australian licorice, licorice that you were talking about whenever yeah. I tried the vape train black licorice. I was like, oh, this is going to be like those Australian licorices, right? They must be famous for that or something, or I wouldn't see authentic <laughs> right. Australian licorice on the bag everywhere. Right. Yeah. And, um, but it's, I don't know about that. Really? I don't know. Yeah. The you, you vape train black would. licorice. It's very sharp and spicy and couple was just saying that that the Australian licorice is actually pretty mellow. It's really mellow, yeah. I, I like the green apple ones the best, but um, the black licorice ones are pretty good. The it's the vape train black licorice is it's got it's just sharp and spicy. And then there's some hints of vanilla and something like a musky floral in there. Like uh, I have it, but I didn't get around to testing it before the show because I didn't I wasn't sure if I was even coming on to there or not. You'd probably like it because there's something almost like rose-like in there. Oh, well, I mean, Rick would probably hate it. You know <laughs> yeah, probably. I do. I, I do have another exotic licorice. Um, so flavor monks. I actually had an ancient bottle of flavor monks drop. Oh, that uh, stuff's good. I like that. Yeah, it's good. I just don't know if it's trying to source it from flavor monks. Good. Um, <laughs> has nothing, a, nothing is that good. Yeah, it's kind of halfway in between Flavor West Black Licorice and Capella Licorice. It it isn't as sweet and kind of warm as Flavor West, but it 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 does have like a nice, fairly clean, like kind of licorice, almost bordering towards fennel kind of note to it. Decent body, very smooth. Um, has almost a little bit of funkiness. I think when I think of like hardcore european licorice like i think of the salted black licorice and it's definitely not a salted black licorice flavor but it does have like a little bit of the funkiness that kind of comes out in licorice when you add salt to it without the actual salt like uh, uh what's that salmiac or whatever yeah. yeah yeah um it's definitely a good flavor and if you're super super into licorice it might be worth trying to drag it down but i don't think it's gonna tip anybody over the fence on anything it's just a really solid like solo licorice flavor yeah, I agree. I didn't even think of that one. I, I haven't. Even, I have like that stash of flavor monk sitting in the back of my collection, just collecting dust because <laughs> I can't use them out of spite. <laughs> yeah. But I can't throw them away because I can't. Oh, yeah, it's so it, it's completely solid, but it's not like mind blowing good like the um like their gins are. Like their gins are worth seeking out if you're into gins. The black licorice. Yeah. 
if it comes into your possession, that's fine or whatever. I'm just not sure, but it's worth going through the pain in the ass of getting it. So if you like gin and you're going through that trouble to source the gin and you also like licorice, you might pick it up, but don't go out of your way. Like I wouldn't kick it out of bed, but I'm not riding in a sonnet either. You know what I mean? All right. Speaking of not riding a sonnet, Stephen, don't let me be the only one who tried who's tried to low see this week. Oh shit. Delosi they, has one. They have, you a have black one job, Chiba. Ah, man. Oh, one Chiba. job. God one man. job. <laughs> I could probably grab it real quick. Well, I wouldn't if I were you. Um, <laughs> I the I d- describe this as washed out flavor West black licorice, or possibly okay. as expired black Twizzlers. Okay, yeah, I figured this one would probably be a little bit uh, not up to par just because it's probably thin like you said it yeah, what it t- flavors tend to it and doesn't I'll- it doesn't have any weird notes that shouldn't be there but it just tastes dull and flat compared to all these more vibrant licorices like okay all of the other ones i tried all the, the capella flavor west flavor art vape train they're all more bright and vibrant than this and this is just kind of flat and dull um it is it's mild it's slightly sweet smooth um it does taste like it might be a good flavor in the background of something but it just doesn't have that like oomph that you want for you know to be the centerpiece of something if you want that because you like licorice (laughs) it's a rather boring type of flavor it was so boring i just spent the whole time talking about it looking at my phone yeah, see. <laughs> what uh, what percentage did you try? Four. Four. Yeah, that's probably a good range for it. Um, if anybody wants to find out if it's as boring to them, you can get it for free. <laughs> no, for real, uh, Scott, the creator of all the flavors, he told me that Delosi accidentally sent him a gigantic bag of 10 milliliter samples of Delosi licorice. Oh, and that if geez. anybody who's watching this show wants to wants a free sample they can email their info to support at all the flavors.com and he will mail them out to you until he runs out. So wow. free Delosi black licorice. Go go. For it. <laughs> free expired Twizzlers flavor. There you go. How could you resist <laughs> that people? How could you resist it? David, Rick right now is typing. You look at him. He's typing. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's typing right now. <laughs> you send Delosi licorice. Thank you. <laughs> Please send um, all of your Delosi licorice to me. I'll take 10. No, Rick I is was, just trying to fill a bathtub. I would also just, like a hole, a sock with a hole in it. <laughs> <laughs> I was just That's chastising you for not picking up jungle flavors uh, aniseed because apparently it's okay. So. Uh, oh, really? Yeah, that's what beavers. said. It's a fairly creamy anise. So he said it's much better than FA for the same kind of profile. So for whatever, Ooh. yeah. Well, that's interesting. He said linear up to four percent, then it went Play-Doh for him. So maybe don't mix it at over four <laughs> percent. Jungle flavors. Yeah, I can't think of a jungle flavor I would do that to. So I've never <laughs> oh, there's the black licorice. You find it? You could have just written Scott for a new one. Support at alltheflavors.com. Send free licorice, please. And then, of course, you'll have to give them your address. That's, you know. Yeah. They don't make addresses for in the woods, do they? <laughs> <laughs> Most people are worried about him showing up at their house. It's <laughs> like, I don't, no one's going to find my house. No one will find my house. <laughs> um... All right, so that's Delosi, and you can get it for free. The worst flavor I tried this week was, uh, and you know, it's, I don't, I haven't tried many flavors from them. I love their um, blue slush, blue raspberry slush, but I tried One Stop DIY licorice torpedoes. And horrific? What? Oh, horrific. Yes, horrific. It tastes like good and plenty candies dipped in Fomunda cheese. Ew. Fomunda. No, for real <laughs> Fomunda cheese. It's supposed to taste like good and plenty. Do you know those maroon and white candy coated licorice things? Yeah. Um, and those are definitely in there, but they're covered under what 
I can best describe it as a blanket blanket of putridity. Putridity. Yes, I, I, like I I'm sure it's probably just butyric acid, but something about the way that it's interacting with the other flavors in there, it it tastes less like vomit and more like the way that my balls smell after a weekend of camping in the woods and not showering <laughs> or changing clothes the whole time. Hell yeah, really good. <laughs> you know, like when you're driving home from a camping trip. And you what? Scratch. You're driving home from a camping trip and you're like, <laughs> what's that what? smell? Oh my God, that's my own balls and I can smell them through my pants. <laughs> <laughs> you don't, you like don't take baby that. wipes with you camping, brother? <laughs> he no. doesn't take baby wipes camping. Dave, I've been in that exact same position because getting in the car is when you start to realize exactly how horrific you smell and then you get like the, the distinct tang of ball sack. Yeah. Yeah, it's like it's like you you just teabagged these these good and plenty candies and now you're gonna eat them anyway. <laughs> Why not, right? Yeah. So they're after the and they're plenty. After the initial burst of horror, there is there's that that creamy but slightly waxy vanilla, sugary sweet licorice candy, and it has a smooth finish, but it's obviously not worth it to me to get that Famunda flavor at first. It's it's just a rank. Yeah. Just thinking about it <coughs> is making me a little gaggy. Damn. Pretty bad stuff then, huh? It's balls. It tastes like balls. <laughs> <laughs> I mean. Straight I mean, up, just balls. Yeah. yeah. And it, <laughs> Ball gargling with a, with a mouthful of good and plenty something. <laughs> boys camping trip. <laughs> the only flavor that makes it gag just thinking about it. I mean, no, there are others like one on one cheese, but um, the, yeah, it's just so it, it makes me curious about because I think it's caused by butyric acid and I want to find out if there's like some weird effect that you can get with licorice and butyric acid that neutralizes it somehow if you do a better mm -hmm. job of it than this. But the, the idea of doing all those experiments just kind of, no, I'm not doing that. I'm not really doing that. It's just a thought experiment. Yeah. Because I I don't I don't want to accidentally clone ball flavor. <laughs> Are you sure? Someone yeah, might be into I'm that. I'm sure. Someone might be into that ball vape. Well, uh, it's certainly not ball flavor after a camping trip, man. <laughs> <laughs> Just doesn't get better than that. I'm gonna have to take baby wipes with me the next time I go camping. I hadn't even thought about that. I just usually just stew in it. <laughs> yeah. Koppel just pays his manservant to uh, wash him down. It's all good. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> oh, Wipe boy. me. Yeah. Wipe me, slave boy. <laughs> um, so for something much, much more pleasant, we could talk about absinthe flavors. That's where I'm at. I've got three absinthe flavors and none of them are as good as yours. No, two absinthe no. flavors and a Jägermeister flavor. Oh, Jägermeister yeah. doesn't count. It's disgusting. Jägermeister. <laughs> um, yeah, I will say I did just try that Delosi, and uh, I'll agree with you, Dave. The, the anise flavor is lacking a little bit. There's not really any body to it. Uh, it doesn't have a whole lot of that like molasses-y type of uh, vibe that you want from a black licorice. It's just kind of dull, right? Yeah, I mean, I would say this one's below delightfully mediocre. <laughs> a lot of delightfully mediocre stuff. It's You can just take off the delightfully and just call it mediocre. There you go. <laughs> So, yeah, I'd skip this one. At least it's not balls. At least it's not balls. Delosi's new slogan, at least it's not balls. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, think I think they'd prefer to go with delightfully mediocre. Yeah. Stale, stale anus with less balls. Is that what you <laughs> oh. oh, boy. I don't so, know about you guys, but balls... With my aunt, never mind. That's enough. You're done. <laughs> yeah. Just don't <laughs> mute him. Um, absinthe. Uh, decadent vapors absinthe is very good. Absinthe. I feel like most people here would concur. I have not tried decadent vapors absinthe because I don't have a great interest in vaping absinthe. But from it's... everything I've heard, it must be. And Flavor West and TFA are not that great. So TFA yeah, was so... okay. It's okay. Flavor West was disgusting. But Decadent Vapors, yeah, they definitely did something approach. right. Uh, it definitely has a lot of that nuance that app, like a good absinthe has. Well, that's yeah. what's yeah. missing yeah. from TFA, and Flavor West is just like like Copel said, it's gross. Flavor West absinthe tastes like you're like licking melted jack uh, black jelly bean from a leaf. 
Yeah. Ew. One thing to note. <laughs> the, uh, one thing to note about the decadent vapors is uh, it's actually got a little bit of a green hue to it. Yeah, it's, it's definitely. It's got green. wormwood in there. Yeah. <laughs> or you're gonna hallucinate. Yeah. Um, her, yeah. Her, her, can her you statement. hallucinate if you vape enough of it? That's what I need to know. Per a statement from their their uh, business manager that I talked to at least a, more than once about the colors in there, because I guess it's apparently because of their natural extraction process, right? The same as the... That's what I figured, but... Same with the okay. crystal blue, which is bright blue. Oh, okay. Uh, but what are they naturally the they extracting it from? Smurfs. <laughs> like, <laughs> like raw ingredients from... Like, like raw absent anise. ingredients. Yeah. So green <laughs> aniseed and, you know, whatever roots and shit to their... I don't know. And it's uh, fucking absinthe has got like 20 or 30 odd herbs in it, right? Yeah. Uh, so with, what's going on? Uh, with, and I don't, um, I don't have the whole list in front of me, but yeah, it's part of like the natural extraction process. So the, the the thing that I like about the decadent vapors absinthe is it does definitely have like an anise seed flavor. Like that's most of what you're going to get, although I don't find it completely overwhelming. But it has like some herbaceous depth you pick up. Some mm. other things. Um, it the other stuff in there isn't like loud enough to really pick apart other things, but it has almost like. A, like an angelica root from gin kind of like herbal flourish to the end on the back of that anise seed. It's fairly sweet. Mm -hmm. uh, it gets a little throaty for me, but in terms yeah. of like complexity, like it's just a really nice complex flavor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. One of my favorites, it is a little hard to vape. Like you were saying, just like a lot of it. Um, so I can find myself getting tired of it. Although that green with envy Golly, I didn't ever find myself getting tired of that stuff. <laughs> I, I think that it's really smart. Uh, their use of WS23 in that is really smart because it cuts through like the the syrupy back end. Because decadent vapors absinthe is really kind of it's it's pretty thick, right? It's really sweet. Um, and it'll, it's a it's a it's a, it's a smidge on the syrupy side. So I think the WS23 really cuts through that and helps you lighten it up a bit. Like, and it feels a lot nicer to vape all day long. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, really uh, you said that you don't think that the TFA absinthe is the, all that bad. No, I don't think it's bad. It's just not. It's just not exciting either. It tastes more like just licorice. That's kind of a, like a beveragey licorice. Not. It's not necessarily. boozy. It's got a little bit of booziness. It's also got a little bit of that like dark molassesy type of a uh, flavor that you get from licorice. Uh, I found anyway. Did you guys pick up on that at all? I just Say that one more time. Maybe it tastes like some kind of imaginary anise flavored alcoholic beverage. Kind of. I don't get that much booziness from the TPA one. Uh, I was saying I got a little bit of that like molasses y, uh, sort of dark, syrupy uh, thickness that you get from some of the other uh, like black licorice flavors. Yeah, which I thought it's really was odd. Closer, yeah, it's closer to black licorice than it is to anise to me. Like there's, yeah, I thought that like, was really odd. Some that. kind of moderate, weird beverage vibe to it, but I still get a like plenty of like black licorice vibe off of it. Yeah. And the flavor West is just a pathetic excuse for absinthe. It mostly just tastes like they're black licorice, but with something kind of herbal in there, mm -hmm. no booziness, no bitterness, no sort of really herbal complexity, just that one sort of leaf flavor and no floral qualities or any of that fun absinthe stuff, just black licorice off a leaf. Nice. Um, speaking of absinthe, did anybody try the uh, Chef's Choice absinthe, or is that just me? That's probably just you. How is it? Uh, it's pretty good. Um, it's quite bright with the anise, uh, which I like. You know, some of these other ones aren't quite as bright with the uh, anise as I'd want it to be. Um, but it's also got a little bit of like a uh, that lemon or uh, lime type of flavor. You know, maybe coming from that. Uh, would you say it was like lemonine? Yeah, lemonine. It almost tastes like uh, like an absinthe limeade. So it, I would say it's a little off as far as uh, like an absinthe. Um, but uh, but yeah, it's pretty good. I like this stuff. I've Would got you drink an absinthe limeade? Does that sound good to you? <laughs> I don't yeah, know. I mean. If you're going to mix chef's, absence with something, that doesn't It's taste Chef's good. Choice. Are you sure? It's Chef's Choice, not part of the Emmy range? Uh, chef's Choice. I don't know. I ordered it instead of Decadent Vapors by accident. 
If it's on Chef's Choice, that means it's actually Cupcake Worlds. Cupcake Worlds? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it was from uh, Chef's Flavors that you go. Yeah, that's no, right. the yeah. rebrand Cupcake World. But uh, Chef's Choice, like they have like five or six different uh, rebrand ranges, but Chef's yeah. Choice is all uh, Cupcake, cupcake. World. Okay. I didn't even know that was a place. Yeah, uh, they're out in Germany, I think. <laughs> nice. But yeah, I like this one a lot. I might even start picking this sometimes over decadent vapors just because it seems pretty smooth and um, quite flavorful. And I could see it fitting in a lot of different places just because it's sweet. It's got a little bit of a syrupy vibe. It's does it does it fit the kind of chef's choice like uh, kind of weaker percentage wise? Because I notice like a yeah a big, a pretty big range of, of CCW uh, is kind of on the weak side. Like the rhubarb, I can push mm -hmm. to like seven or eight percent. You know. Yeah, recommended percent on all the flavors was thirteen percent. I did it at like six, I want to say, and um, I could see bumping this up to like ten. Yeah. So friction was giving us some shit in the chat about not listing percentages. And I just kind of wanted to like circle around to that for me anyway, when I'm using like black licorice flavor or anise flavor, or anything like that, I feel like the percentages are all pretty heavily dependent on how much you actually like that stuff. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, definitely. I, uh, I feel like for the vast majority of everything, I would start at under a percent. Like, Except like, with the exception of cap, maybe. But yeah. I would I would start at half a percent with nearly everything we talked about today, and then we're some of the ones I would not. Uh, some of the ones I would say start higher are the more complicated ones that are mixed things. Yeah, like so like the, the Mulberry Shock, the weird Capella the Sweet Blend, and Cool and Explicit. If we didn't manage to make those sound terrible for you, and you want to try <laughs> them anyway, they're not going to come together really well below like three or or maybe even four percent. Um, yeah. But for the straight up licorices and anise, definitely start quite low. And with DV absinthe or probably TPA absinthe too, like you could start at like five or six percent probably. That um, that will burn my throat. You're crazy. No, <laughs> if they <laughs> if they absinthe three percent was harsh to me. Starting range for those. What's that? Three to five percent is a good starting range for those. Deccan and vapors is also a little bit weak. Uh, DV, you could push way higher. You could push that stuff to like fifteen, and it's fine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, but yeah, in general, if you're using them, if you're using these flavors and not trying to make it like the star of anything, uh, yeah, it's really just about adding like flourishes and accents and stuff. And for that stuff, you really just have to dial that in on a per recipe basis. But in general, it's better to start low. Yeah. Way low. Way, way low. I have one more flavor and a question. Have okay. any of y'all tried Flavor West Red Bowl? Yes. Yeah. Is it? Is it legit? Yeah, it's it's not right. bad. Yeah, it's not bad. I think I like Hangson's Red Energy more, but Red Bull's fine. The reason it's why a, I asked is because I tried Flavor West Jaeger Bomb, mm. and it tastes like drinking Red Bull through a black licorice straw. Yeah, mm. Jaeger Bomb's pretty slept on for just like a single flavor. If that's the profile you're going for, it's pretty fucking dead on. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think I know, there's uh, some booziness missing from and, and some herbal sort of complexity missing from Jägermeister, but yeah, it, the Red Bull part is really on point. That's why I was like, maybe Red Bull. I haven't tried it yet. Maybe Red Bull is really good because I that's wonder, their Red Bull uh, Red Bull version. I wonder yeah. if um, you throw some black touch in there, maybe that would uh, bump up the the Jäger profile a little bit. I think it's missing like literal booze, so. It's missing yeah. actual booziness. Grain alcohol. Yes, <laughs> some grain alcohol. Uh, I think TFA. I mean, Copal still says it's not that boozy, but I think TFA absinthe might do it. Oh yeah. Mm, okay. Or yeah, like, that's theoretic. That's theoretically possible. Or even uh, Vape Train's Russian vodka. That may be the one place where you could use that. That you know, may be the thing have, too. I have a point. Yeah, because it it doesn't taste like anything but <laughs> but boozy and. And exactly it, and a little bit and a little bit like shame and so, <laughs> <laughs> it's like regret. so you add a little bit of that you got the perfect jaegerbomb experience i mean yeah. jaegerbomb should taste like regret for it sure have like a nice uh should have a nice question your life choices kind of finish yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, but, but that that red bull the red bull part of jaegerbomb is really good i mean i don't know about good but it's really accurate 
<laughs> yeah, it tastes like rest- sweet tarts and batteries and taurine. <laughs> um, the 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 thing that I think that that Red Bull flavor works better in that Eager Bomb flavor just because the black licorice gives it a little bit of extra body that's kind of missing from Red Bull by itself. Yeah, Red Bull okay. is a little thin and it's it's a little a little heavy on the throat hit. Um, that. that can be kind of hard to tame, but um, but it is it is fairly accurate otherwise. Cool. But you don't need it to make a Jaeger bomb. All you need to do is fix the Jaeger part because the Flavor West Jaeger bomb is is almost there. Just need some booze and some maybe maybe some herbs. Many uh, many shitty house juices were made exclusively on that flavor. <laughs> <laughs> were they really? Yeah, well, I'm like 95 percent sure that my first uh, bought the first house juice I ever bought was just Flavor West Jaeger bomb. Was that Jaeger that? bomb. To think like why would someone want to make a Jaeger bomb recipe? Because for Some most people, like that. <laughs> thinking or remembering of Jaeger bomb is not <laughs> pleasant memory. <laughs> why would you want to recreate that? I mean, I don't remember it all that well, so <laughs> yeah, a lot of memories were erased that night <laughs> or just never encoded. I couldn't yeah, decide, yeah. so I was just like, "Give me the weirdest shit you have," and they hand and you a bottle of twenty percent flavor West Jaeger bomb. Was yeah, it? Yeah. It probably was twenty uh, percent. Four or five percent is more than enough, I think, <laughs> as a single flavor. I don't. But we're don't talking actually, about house juices here, buddy. Yeah, but I, but don't actually do that. I don't want anyone <laughs> to go home and it, purchase it, Flavor West Jaeger Bomb right now. It's with like uh, this is like Ego Pen days. <laughs> okay, twenty I mean, percent oh, okay. is actually pretty reasonably possible. Yeah, I Might, that might work in a pod. Yeah, twenty yeah, percent sure, Jaeger Bomb, good to go. Jaeger Bomb. Yeah. Oh Jesus! You just dated yourself, Chiba. <laughs> Jaeger bombs. <laughs> oh <Jesus>. boy. <laughs> so yeah, let's see. Uh, I guess that was the last one, then, huh? The Jaeger bomb. That's the last one I have. If you guys have anything else to add, no, I've uh, I've wrapped up. Um, thank you for making me vape licorice flavors back to back. I thought I liked black licorice and now I'm a little bit not so sure. (laughs) (laughs) Perfect. Yeah, I thought I'd enjoy this episode a little bit more than I did, but hey. (laughs) Yeah, I was pretty pumped about it at first and then I thought about vaping all that stuff for like days on end and then I was like, I'll just go on with what I have. It just goes to show you can have too much of a good thing. (laughs) That's right. Still don't like licorice. I don't know if many people would agree with you on that one, Emily. <laughs> so are you guys ready to be called Philistines on in like the YouTube comments? You for oh uh, my God. not paying mad. adequate respect to, to anise flavors? <laughs> I'm all right with it. Please direct all of those comments to what's your website, Rick? <laughs> <laughs> it's www.google.com. <laughs> Ooh, Raven Shadow says maybe Flavora Juniper Gin, Flavora Juniper Gin for the, I guess for the Jaeger bomb. I I think Jaegermeister. It's just like I think Chiba's Black Touch thing was actually pretty in the ballpark, adding some of that like weird yeah, yeah. syrupy dark funkiness. And then if you really want to go wild, some vape trying uh, Russian vodka on top of that. That yeah. that'd do it if you want a really authentic Jaeger bomb <laughs> for some reason. <laughs> nice all right so next week what do we got going next week next week week we're supposed to do spices spices. but it's also supposed to be our 100th episode so people want us to do something special to mark the occasion (laughs) so i guess we'll spend about half the week on uh half the episode on um spices there aren't that many because we've already you know covered various spices separately yeah, ain't us good clove, and we'll cover cinnamon a, a past, and we'll do it again in the near future. And ginger, we've had a whole episode of the spice blends. We've done pumpkin spice before. Mm-hmm. We've, we've already covered that, but w- there are some oddball spices floating around out there that we haven't touched, like cardamom and saffron and black pepper and all that type of junk. Saffron? You mean diesel? Exotic roots. Yeah. <laughs> we haven't really gotten into the um, t- into the uh, the bitters aspect either and those are spice blends so hmm. we talk about some of those for about half the show and spend the other half on superlatives 
people want superlatives. They want they want like best flavors, best episodes, favorite guests, blah blah blah. So I guess we'll do some of that. Yeah. Or you'll get I'll drunk on Lone Star and a Shark Head. I will probably <laughs> start drinking, and yes, the Shark Head tends to come out when that happens. <laughs> oh snap! Uh, and Copa will well, be your accomplice, apparently. <laughs> Well, I'll, I'll be, be bottomless, but that's every week. So <laughs> <laughs> hard to believe it's already going to be a hundred episodes, man. That's crazy. I would think a hundred and four episodes would be the real milestone because that's two freaking years worth of content. Yeah, yeah. I would have thrown myself off a bridge after like three episodes. You people are all insane. <laughs> You've done well over three episodes. What are you talking about? I know, and I've thrown myself <laughs> off a bridge already. I just didn't, it wasn't high enough. It was wasn't successful. Yeah. <laughs> Too much water at the bottom. All right, but you'll be back for uh, Grapefruits? Yes. Yes, I will. Right. And if I can't get you back on for energy drinks, you'll at least help me with that one, because I don't even know what flavors to get for it. Uh, yeah, you, need, you need the flavor of industrial energy poison, and I'm very familiar with it, so we'll yeah. get you sorted. <laughs> the chemical slurries just tell me what to buy and i'll just go from there um and before that even happens Copa will be back for what is it passion fruit yeah i think so yeah that he doesn't know passion fruit it, it, it is it's passion fruit and it's in like in a month you asked me for like five or four or five of them and i don't remember when they are so that was the only one you you would agree to ahead of time oh man i'll be pumped for yeah. when that comes out. i'm gonna be out of town like two weeks after this weekend so when you get back we'll we'll talk passion fruit sure ram oh. says he's got me on the energy drinks too good everyone just tell me i can give you i can give you a list to buy. okay if, that'd be yeah. awesome that'd be just, good but remind me because i forget everything because so far i'm like uh red bull green goblin i'm done <laughs> <laughs> oh green goblin's supposed to be monster yeah uh, are you are you just now getting that, Chiba? I am, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you understand that we're that we're intentionally saying Red Bull? Well, because, welcome, and to, not Red welcome Bull. To in 2014, Red Bull. Chiba. <laughs> Red Bull. It's not a cereal flavor, <laughs> but it goes in your bowl. Put that uh, in your bowl and smoke it. No. Okay, and on that devastating. <laughs> <laughs> So the much cursed help. comment <laughs> and helping us with this black liquor stuff because I know Dave and I were kind of at a loss. People <laughs> likes them, but we the rest of us were like, uh. so thank you for coming on and helping us out with that. Yeah, and, no problem. Yeah, and sure guys, did. thank you so much for hanging out with us too. At the uh, all you viewers out there, and we'll see you next week. Adios, muchachos. <laughs>